and that involves like drawing some cards from the draw pile which i haven't drawn yet and then like um there will be a table here which puts all the discarded cards and then you have a board so i spent the last two sessions trying to figure out how to make like a ui move from point to point when you click on it so so far it looks um looks good already today i have about 20 minutes in the morning i like to do a very simple thing i would like to just uh go to create the table and the draw pile Okay, I don't think I have time to do the game logic yet. Yeah, but you know, with a kid, it's hard to stream and hard to do stuff. I will just take my time and do bit by bit whenever possible. So yeah, let's start with the table. Okay, let's do the table today. Um, let's go. Okay, so in my game area, I have a table here. Okay, I would like the table to contain like certain uh, squares as well. So I like to split my table into two parts, okay? So there will be a, maybe what I'll do is, instead of doing it manually, I can split it like that. So I can duplicate this thing and call it the deck. And then in the deck, I will have, you know, in the draw area, I have a button, right? I can just copy and paste this. Okay, in the deck, I have an image. I'll move here. This one will be the tag. Maybe I'll give it a different color. Yellow, maybe. Can I have text as well? Nope, I can't. So let's have a UI text inside. Call it tag. Okay, so this one is just called tag. And then maybe I'll position this at the top like that. Uh, middle, middle align, centralize, and then this one will be candy beans, best fit, so that it becomes bigger, back. then I'll put a button there, okay, so I'll just copy the button that I pasted, I'll put it in the deck. So maybe over here, I'll reset position, so that it goes to the deck. Yeah, something like that. Actually, this is good. Then maybe I duplicate this thing. And then um, this this new deck will be the deck counts. So the deck count, uh, I will center, cent center it at the bottom. And this one will be like the number of cards left. Like probably going to be like 16 or something like that. Uh, 40. 40 minus 4 minus 4 32 we can start 32 yeah. okay so we have a deck count here okay and then over here we have a table okay so uh what i'll do is i'll have a game object and i'll call it the top bar which will then encompass the deck the deck and the table so we have a top bar here like that and then i duplicate this deck sure I, I just wonder whether i could you know uh in top bar, i do a horizontal layout group middle center okay where's my top bar position is here So I wonder if I could just do a horizontal layout group and then the control child size with okay. So I have a deck here. Okay, uh so I just want my deck to be like here. Then I have a separate thing and the on the right here, it's got a table. So in this table here, the top, the top part will be the table. And then the table deck count will be zero. Okay, so actually the table doesn't really need a deck count, but it needs a plentiful number of buttons here. So what can be done is that we have a new object, game object. Actually, I'm starting to think that the horizontal layout group for this game area is not necessary. Oh, sorry, for the top bar, it may not be necessary. 
I'll remove it. Okay, because I can just manually set it. I realize. Uh, I just anchor this to the left. And then I anchor the table to the right. Like that. The table I'll expand a bit. Okay, because I want more. I want it to encompass more so the table can go like that. The table can be a different color like orange. Yeah, I think that will work. And then over here, this game object will be the table cards. Okay, over here we can have a horizontal layout group. Okay, middle center. Okay, and then we can put all the buttons here. Okay, so over here the Y port should be zero. Okay, so uh, I would like the buttons to be controlled by the horizontal layout group. Middle, center, control, scale, scale, group. Okay, let's reverse now the changes. Okay, so it looks like table cuts yeah, 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 yeah yes okay yeah let's like to spread out this so that uh, there's more cuts on the table okay so now we have created the table the top bar you just shift the top bar like that aha uh -huh, this is the great part of of uh, I think I, uh, okay, let's delete this so at the bottom I'll also do a bottom I'll do another game object. And then this I will call it the play area. And then the play area will include the P1 area and the P2 area. So let's duplicate this. I will not make a pre prefab because just in case I need to change anything. Okay, so the play area currently is like a measly amount of stuff. So I should expand it. Not too sure why this uh, play play one area the image is expanding accordingly. It's not supposed to. Um, okay, I got a better idea. You know what? Before I drag, before I drag in this play one. Okay, Let's delete player two area. Before I drag in player two area, let's take it out first. Let me just resize my play area. Like that. Yeah, I'll just resize it. I can drag my player one area inside. Okay, maybe I need to make the player a little bigger. Like say here, then I drag in my P1 area here, and the P1 area will be anchored to the left of the play area. So, where's my play area now? Here it is. I don't want the image to scale with this. I'm not sure how do I make this non scalable. This is rather irritating that once I shift my play area, the image shifts as well. Unless I make the image here instead. So my image, I can make it and delete this thing here. I can have the image as the part of the play area itself. And if I scale my play area, does it change the image size? Okay, yes, it does, but not to that big an extent. Because the play one area will be shifted accordingly. I think that might be, that, that might look better. I have another area called P2 area. It's starting to look like a game now. It's starting to look like a game now. Then this one I anchor it to the right. Okay, and the play area here. 
I can centralize this area. So, um, I think this was better. Let's shift this. Yeah, so I can shift it like that. In the game, it will look like this. Table. Okay, let's just see whether the buttons are working. So if this is the, the card position over here, and I click on the different things, it should go to the different areas. Okay, so now you see it doesn't really render over the play area because the clover is below the play area. So let's just shift the play area here. Shift it above the clover. Yes. Okay, now let's see again. So when I click on the white squares, it's supposed to shift the card accordingly to the right position. So it's like here, 19. Okay, very good. So the cards on the table can, can go here one by one. I'll figure out the mechanic later, but at least now we got the movement going. It's really cool to see like from the deck, the card flies out. The card from the deck should fly out and come here. Then you should be able to play like that. Yeah. So uh, now we need just one more thing before I can start coding the um the game logic. It should be done probably in the afternoon. I really want to finish this game by the end of the week and create the AI as well. So, you know, stay tuned if you are interested to see um, this uh, lucky numbers being created. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun challenge to create a game in a short time. Uh, but actually, I'm just interested in the AI of this game. And this um, is just like a by the way thing for me. Okay, so see what color should I put it in the dark blue would be good for the okay so this thing here then have a text The text I'll stretch it all the way. Stretch everything. I think I just stretch the middle like that. Player one may make his move or something like that. Yeah, there's just some placeholder text which will be shifted, uh will, will be changed shortly later. Okay, best fit. And I'll make it white color. Yeah, so something on like that. Uh, next up, we'll be creating the game logic. So like this, these cards will, will fly towards the squares. Okay, before we create the game logic, uh, like whenever you select a card, like over here, I would like to make the card have a certain border around it. Right? So let's go to our prefabs and our button. Okay, let's add one more component for our shadow or outline. Add a component for our outline. We make it golden color. Like that golden color outline okay and then we make the effect distance like maybe five yeah so this should show that like it's selected okay what if i don't put the alpha i think i don't put the alpha is better like that why is there this weird line So if I have this outline, I can just on and off my outline to tell the player whether or not the card is selected. So let's say if I on my outline. Slick. Yeah, maybe two two like that. So if I apply this thing, if I go back to my scene, all my cards should have a go outline right now. Uh, in fact, we can just keep the go outline, I think. It looks nice. Okay, um, but that means when I select, I can change the outline to blue, I guess. So like over here, let's say if, if this button is selected, 
Yeah, then I can change this using script. I can change this to blue color. Yeah, okay, let's see how it looks like. See how it looks like. So it looks like this now. So when I click, so I'll make it such that when you like select the cut or unselect it, you will toggle the border outline of, of this cut. I think the cut itself doesn't need to have an outline. The outline is purely just for the okay, something's lagging on my computer, but the outline itself is purely for the cut itself. So up here, this will be the instructions to tell the player whose turn is it, uh, where your cut is you can take from the table or from the deck. And then like this will be the grids that the player will be competing against over here. So these clover cuts will have different colors. Like with two players, we have a blue color and green and maybe yellow. Uh, we we'll decide on the colors later, but the key thing is that the X number of players, you have X sets of cards from 1 to 20. And the aim is to form, finish your grid faster than the other player. And okay, uh, yep, that's the end of the stream for this morning. A short one just to create um, the game layout. As you can see, it's, uh, it's quite completed already. Next up will be the game logic, uh, game logic programming. So yep, stay tuned and... Probably, I hope the game logic can be done by today. <laughs> I'll probably try to stream again tonight. And yeah, see you around. Bye-bye.